I always enjoy sitting down with Jean-Charles Boisset. He's chic, engaging, and truly exhibits his passion when he talks about his wine and wineries. And those include the historic Buena Vista Winery in Sonoma, Deloche Vineyards in Russian River Valley, and Raymond Vineyards in Rutherford, Napa Valley. And now they're celebrating the 40th anniversary of Raymond's first vintage in 1974. It's a 2014 release. Jean-Charles is a relentless innovator, and for his 40th anniversary bottle, he's using a red velvet label. <laughs> no kidding. It definitely makes a statement. Thank you, Jeff. Indeed. So what we elected to do is to take the red room, which is full of texture, as you know, a lot of red velvet, crystal chandelier, and bringing on the bottle. So the inside of the wine is very velvety, very rich, very silky, mm -hmm. very lingering. And we thought, how could we demonstrate it on the outside of the bottle as well? So we decided to create the first ever velvet label ever done in the history of wine. I was going to ask, have you ever seen that before? Because I hadn't. Never, never. And I was dreaming to put the curtains on the, on, on the bottle. Uh -huh. And then I have a printer who tells me, you know, we just found out a new technology where we can possibly do it. I says, can we see it? Brought it over and we did it. So it's beautiful gold embossed on it. Mm -hmm. And they really successfully respected the printout of the background of those curtains on the label. So it looks gorgeous. I'm yeah. enamored with it. I want to touch it. I want to sleep with it. I want to <laughs> hold it. I want to caress it. This it is, is what it's all yeah. about. It is pretty spectacular. And the, the interesting thing about it is it doesn't seem unusual. It's, it seems very natural in a Thank sense. You. I mean, it's innovative. But it's not like, oh, that's way over the top. It's like, oh, this is very nice. Well, this is exactly great when a wine from the outside speaks about what is in the inside, what it's evoking the texture. Because in wine, we talk a lot about texture. So that's always the most critical thing. And, and in this case, I think it demonstrated as you look at it, right. it really feels right in the yeah, you captured it for sure. And you've never been one to shy away from innovative style. Well, we, we try. We believe, you know, we're in a very traditional world making wine, but at the same time innovating in it, whether it's the closure, the capsule, whether it's the container, whether it's a, a clear glass even for a Cabernet so that you use it for the surrealist, as you know, with JCB as a uh, decanter, mm -hmm. or it is the label, or it is leather label, mm -hmm. which we're coming out with that wow. you're going to be able to, to see very soon with Raymond. A leather label. Yes, so... We made a wine which is uh, from the property. It's called One and a Half Acre because it's only one and a half acre. It's the perfect Bordeaux blend. It's only presented at the winery, and it's a leather label, uh, which is so cool, beautiful printed, uh, to think about the animal which we cherish the most, which is the cow. Oh, and I was wondering, too, if it evokes the flavor of the wine because sometimes you can get leather with mm -hmm. tobacco and that sort of thing. You're exactly right. Very well said. It does. And you have that flavor, and we wanted as well the label to be made of a very unique style and fabric that has as well never been done before. So leather and now obviously velvet. So it's a lot of fun. There's no end to your creativity. Well, the Reserve Cabernet Sauvignon from Raymond for the 40th anniversary is a nice blend of uh, Petit Verdot with the Cab Sauvignon, Petit Syrah, Malbec, and sourced from Raymond's organic and biodynamic farms, which is the trademark of the Boisset collection. That's right, and very important to us. We, we believe respecting Mother Nature is essential, and even more importantly, you know, I often say to people when they come on the property, take off your shoes and caress the skin of Mother Nature. Mm. Feel the energy that come from the soil, from the earth, from the underground, from the unseen. And what we've decided to do really is to move the entire galaxy around wine and use the lunar calendar and the relationship between the moon, the sun, and the earth as a precept to everything we do. So not only are we organic, at Raymond, but as well biodynamic. So we use the biorhythm of Mother Nature to help us and guide us into everything we do in the vineyard. And your family's been doing that for decades. We have for decades, indeed. We started in 1998, so it's almost 20 years now that we've been fully organic and biodynamic in many of our properties. What I found interesting is this wine was aged for 19 months in 100% French oak, but only 30% new oak, unfiltered, and yet... And in a sense, maybe this helps with the uh, only 30% new oak. I'm surprised that this Reserve Cabernet is only selling for $40. That's it. Well, we want to make sure that people have access to Napa Valley in a reasonable fashion. 
and that they love it and that we move them from maybe European wines or, or from wines from Sonoma or Pinot into a very luscious, elegant and eloquent Cabernet without breaking the bank. And we feel it's very important. Napa Valley sometimes could go very high on the pricing scale and we do as well. Mm-hmm. We have wine at Raymond from the Napa Valley 40 dollars all the way up to 250 dollars now so we want to make sure that some people can enjoy it as well at at 40 dollars and of course that ties in nicely with the 40th anniversary of course 40 dollars 40 years well, well now, said now i was thinking though if you really wanted to pay homage to that 74 vintage you could have offered it at the 1974 price yes you, would be good do that like or six dollars or oh we could uh, price it at 74 dollars oh. <laughs> Yeah, now that's a true owner speaking there. <laughs> well, you provoked me, Jim. <laughs> okay, yes, I did. Yeah, reaching back into the history a little bit, I was, you know, I didn't realize that Roy Raymond has been working in the wine business or had worked in the wine business since Prohibition. Worked at Behringer for a long time right. until he started Raymond Vineyards in 1970. Yes. What a history he has. Well, the history is amazing, and we really want to pay tribute to that history. We're really interested in the past. The past is as important as the present and the future. Mm-hmm. And we learn so much from the past. So the generation uh, wine that the family had created in 1993 paid tributes to four generations of family winemakers. And then in 93 was added Chrissy Raymond as the fifth generation. So Roy started at Behringer. Then when Behringer sold to Nestle in the late 60s, he said, I don't want my kids to be raised in a corporate world. Let's buy this ranch in Santa Lina and Rutherford. It's going to be amazing for them. Uh, let's move the winery and start a winery. Start a Raymond Vineyard winery, which they did. And it became the success you know. Yeah. It's not surprising as a Frenchman that you, uh, with the, the wineries you've obtained here, that you do show an appreciation for the history for this, the local wineries here, and it's no doubt due to your upbringing in the Burgundy region, which has centuries of respect for history. Well, thank you, Jeff, and for recognizing that as well. It's so important to recognize the past, and it's so important to recognize that America, and I say that for you and all your listeners, realize that often they tell me, oh, you have so much history, so much history. And you know what I answer to every people I meet? Mm-hmm. You have a shorter history, but you've achieved so much into a short period of time is what needs to be recognized as well. It's not how long the history goes, it's what you've done within that history. And why I'm here in the U.S. spending a ton of time is because I'm very admirative of what you've achieved individually as well as collectively. And I feel in the wine world specifically since the 1857, since the beginning, Buena Vista as an example, And today, it's only 170 years, more or less. And so much has been done in in almost 200 years in wine that today the collaboration between our winemakers from France and here is going both ways, not just one way. And we're learning a lot from our U.S. winemakers as well. So very important to say that, you know, we need to pay tribute and homage to the fastest learning country on the planet, America. He does seem to love and appreciate life in the U.S. He's Jean-Charles Boisset, who is celebrating Raymond Vineyard's 40th anniversary with a reserved Cabernet adorned with a red velvet label. You know, when you hold it in your hand, it's, it is unusual, but it doesn't seem to be too grandiose. It's very nice. He has some other innovations we'll touch upon in the next segment as we continue on The Wine Road. We're back with more On the Wine Road. I'm Jeff Davis. I'm talking with Jean-Charles Boisset, who is the owner of Raymond Vineyards, and they're celebrating their 40th vintage release this year. Unlike some new ownerships, when Raymond Vineyards became part of the Boisset collection, Jean-Charles continued to employ the people who were there and has a friendly, respectful relationship with the Raymond family. For sure. Uh, Jeff, we we love the Raymond. So we're very close with Walter, who's in mid-70s now. He lives in Arizona, but he comes to see us probably every quarter. Uh, the uh, Raymond family works with us. Kirk Reed is our director of production, who is the, wife, the husband of Chrissy Raymond. Uh, Chrissy makes her wine, you know, at our winery as well. She makes a, a thousand cases of a great wine that she um, obviously and naturally makes with us. So we're very passionate about the family. You know, 
in life you could erase the past or you could value the past and enhance the past mm -hmm. and we've chosen that path yeah. respectfully thank you who's the guy that started their his first job was at Raymond many many years ago and he's still there to this day yeah Nuis de Pina as well as his brother you know mm -hmm. and they both incredible they come from Cape Verde and they fell in love with Napa Valley and obviously the United States and decided to stay 40 years ago, 48 years ago. And uh, Nuis, we celebrated his 40th anniversary at the winery last year. So he's into his 41st. Yeah, oh, that's crazy. I'm sure you guys had quite a party for him. We did, we did. It was a, a great recognition. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's so powerful to be able to have someone within our walls who have built the actual winery. He heads all the cellars and does a magnificent job at it, mm. as well as his brother. So we have an amazing team in the cellar, which is you know, very important. It's not only the person who scores the goals or who gets the scores or who lead the winery like myself. It's more importantly, the whole team who builds it every day. Right. You can have an idea. If you don't have a great foundation, it doesn't work. So. We have, I believe, an amazing group, Victor in the vineyards, who've been with us for over five years now, who was at Opus One before, who follows the uh, organic and biodynamic philosophy. Stephanie Putnam, of course, who is an amazing director of winemaking. Kathy George, who's been with us for 27 years, who is um, in the winemaking team as well. So we really honor continuity. We feel it's important, specifically with people who want to adapt mm -hmm. and who have the intelligence and the openness to say fine that's where you want to go I'll go with you because mm -hmm. it's not easy when you bring wineries into your your world you want to move fast you want to move in into the direction you have in mind and many people just fall off the train yeah. well you move fast that's for sure well we we <laughs> you know we here for a short period of time so we'd better ah, move think. fast thank congratulations you. on the thank 40th you. anniversary thank you so much for recognizing yeah. it and and I was delighted, Jeff, when you said, well, let's meet and talk about it because, you know, it's not us. It's the 40 years, the rest that the Raymond have taken, the beautiful 150-acre ranch in Rutherford and Santa Lina. They went to the banks, they borrowed, they made great wines, and they made it. It's not easy to do that in life. It's not easy okay. to take risk. So we need to recognize that. And the wonderful leadership they've had in, in Rutherford, the appellation of Santa Lina and Rutherford is as well thanks to them in the 80s. So let's be recognizing that, that what they've done has been great for yeah, all of us. The, the contributions. Yes. Since I have you here, let's talk about some of these other innovative releases Thank you've you. come up with. You and your team have been quite busy lately. First of all, going back to last year, uh, you released a true French champagne with uh, uh, the Buena Vista label, yes. La Victoire. La Victoire. So thank you again for recognizing that. That's a big coup. So... I think we need to reflect on one thing which is so important. Buena Vista was the first to bring viticulture to California. Noble varieties, as we say. Those are aristocratic uh, grapevines, which is Cabernet, Zinfandel, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, etc. They did it. The Count did it. Number two, he really introduced gravity flow winemaking. Number three, he was the first one in California to make champagne method sparkling wine. His son, Arpad, worked at the Venoge, which is a champagne winery in Champagne. So when we acquired the winery, we said, well, we got to pay tribute to that. How and what is the best way to do it? So we said, well... And you thought, if I only knew some people back in France who could help me with this. <laughs> You're right. If I ever did. So you know what we reflected on is actually something very powerful. And I'm so glad you're interested in this. And I hope the people will be as well. We said to ourselves, what about if we were going the reverse route of Chandon, Moum, Roderer, Gloria Ferrer, and all of those people who came here with their name and established their brand, which had a French, Spanish, or Italian tradition in the U.S.? Let's do reverse. So we are the first and only winery as such making a fully owned wine in Champagne. We actually make two a, 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 a brut and a rosé. It's Buena Vista. It's called Buena Vista La Victoire. And they allowed us to put La Victoire because it's the victory of having achieved sparkling wine in 1862. 
okay. as a méthode champenoise and as well the victory of giving us the right today right. to create a Buena Vista Champagne. That's what I thought. Maybe it was the victory of bringing of a true French Champagne to California. Well, exactly, and signed and made by a California winery. So our team participated greatly into doing it. It's never, ever been done in 150 years. So it's not a private label. It's not a one-off. It's a very legitimate, phenomenal packaging and presentation that is a French Champagne by Buena Vista Winery called La Victoire. So it's probably one of the most exciting things we've done as well as the Tokai, because you know we have as well at Buena Vista right. a six Putonios Tokai. So when they heard we bought the winery, they all came from Hungary. Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Foreign Affairs, the ambassador. Wow. And they said, you're paying tributes to Hungary. We love it. Here's a gift. So at dinner, we opened the gift very kindly in gratitude. It was a six Putonios, phenomenal Hungarian wine. We were melting. This is the beginning of dessert wines. Mm -hmm. So we said, well, we love it. And they say, well, would you want to make one? And we said, are you serious? Do you think we could? And we said, well, we could try to make it happen. And very kindly they did. And we cannot tell you how proud we are. We make seven barrels of a six Putonios, uh, which is the finest of the finest. I mean, there's seven, but I think six is quite amazing. Mm. Seven, I think, probably never leaves Hungary. Right. And it's the highest level. We, it's an elixir. I mean, it's, it's a gift of God. And we absolutely adore it. Now how do you obtain the, the juice? So we make it there. We supervise it. We make it with them. They obviously have the know-how, so we right. don't have much to do but to say yes. Yeah. Because it's so amazing. Right. And we bottle it there. They put the actual flag the green, uh, red, and, and, and white for Hungary. And um, all the legal requirements is done there. It's in the original bottle of, 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 of uh, that specific region. And we label it there, and we bring it to the U.S. as a regular imported wine. But it's only Buena Vista. Right. That's the cool part. Right. Well, and similar to that, now you have the new Haute Couture French bubbles. That's right. But I'm wondering why you're not calling that champagne. Well, the whole philosophy is obviously all about style. It's all about fashion. It's all about the elegance and the refinements of what France has to offer, which is that high fashion. So what we elected to do is we use, for the Brut, Chardonnay as an influence and for the Rosé, Pinot Noir as an influence. And we elected to make a wine, méthode champenoise, so natural fermentation in the bottle, traditional method, as we say, and... We use all the grapes of France to do that. So we use like six or seven grape varieties for each to create the spectacular wine. So it's not just Burgundy, it's not just Champagne, it's the whole country contributes to that. So that's why you can't call it Champagne. And that's why we cannot call it Champagne. And we don't want to because in all due respect, there's so much great grapes to source that we want a very specific feel. You've noticed the wine is very rich, it's very powerful, it's long-lasting. You can even have it with ice. It's a, it's a new way to, to drink bubbles in France. It's called la piscine, the swimming pool. And you put that in a balloon glass or in a regular wine glass, and you put ice in it. Mm. And you call it la piscine. Yeah. So we, we want people as well, when it's a hot day out, uh, to enjoy bubbles with, with ice as well. And that's another one that's uh, at a reasonable price. Very much so. It's only $30 retail. So we do as well the 187, which comes in a beautiful purse, and it's 187 too, and, and they cost $25 for both. Wow, yeah, it's fantastic. And yeah. it, that also has a nice texture to well, it, that, that bottle. So kindly you're recognizing innovation. Yeah. That's one of them. It's the first ever embossed sleeve ever done for bubbles and wine in the world of wine. So you feel, you know, the fishnets, as we call it, colloquially. Yeah. And, and that's the design. It's like so, caressing a, a firm thigh, isn't I it? I love it. I can, <laughs> I'm getting excited. <laughs> and now you have the knockout, which has a boxing theme, has two gold boxing gloves on the, on the bottle. Mm -hmm. And not only is it a knockout wine, you received some knockout scores for that wine. Thank you. Yes, indeed. We, we made an amazing Napa Valley wine. So we wanted a lot of our wines are very eloquent, refined, 
a lot of personality, but not a lot of tannins, not a lot of richness. Richness, but not a lot of in your face, so right. to speak. I agree. We like that really uh, Franco American elegance to it. So, you know what we did is we went the opposite way, just like a hypercut, just like a jab, mm -hmm. which would really knock you out. So, I love kickboxing. That's what I do as a sport, as you do okay, as okay. well. And I love the training and the intensity and, and the fun. And I love the expression, oh, that's a knockout. It's an American expression we even start to use in the French language. Yeah. Ooh, c'est un knockout. Yeah. And it's becoming infiltrating within the French vocabulary, which I love. So we wanted to make a wine which was really powerful, very big. You want to have to assert your style as well, very similar to a couture. So we've made this wine and, and obviously only 50 cases, so two barrels. Oh, and wow. it's a wine I've monitored the evolution over time and we just released and... I love it. It's it's really something. We need to share a bottle together next I'd, time. I'd love to. And, and the score was ninety six points. Uh, Robert Parker very kindly uh, thought the wine was was really. A knockout. I think he even said a knockout. Didn't it's he? a knockout. That's his description. Yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And we put a jewelry, which is, we sell as a keychain now, which is great. It's two beautiful golden boxing gloves right. on it, and it's uh, actually. Uh, uh, in the glass, in on the bottle, so you could reuse the bottle if you wish as a decanter. Yeah, oh, very nice. Yeah, you're also innovative with that idea too. Yeah, well, reusing we, your bottles. Well, exactly. You might as well. So whether, you know, I have two charming little girls at home, as you know. I think you've met yeah. them. Yeah, the ladies. The ladies, twin girls, and they are six almost at the end of this month, and we reuse all the glass bottles of wine uh, as either to put water to put lemonade to put orange juice milk what have you mint flavored water so it's nice because you know why throw them away when they great and you can reuse well, them yeah. i hate to recycle such a beautiful bottle the, the the problem is we we enjoy wine so much that there's so many bottles to recycle i'm running out of ideas <laughs> um do you have a couple more minutes of course you know the one thing we... jeff always okay <laughs> We've talked a few times, but the one thing I've never really asked you is about your family's history. Sure. When did your family begin its first foray, foray into the wine business? Well, I got extremely fortunate that, one, I'm very close to my parents, uh, my mother and, and father. Uh, we've been always close as a family. We, we, we love each other very much, as well as my sister. So my parents fell in love in 1961, and they started the winery together from zero. My grandparents were school teachers. And it was a great example because in a house like where we are, I was raised on the, on the f second floor and the winery was on the first floor. Uh, uh, right in the house, huh? Right in the house. So that's how they started. So I learned everything about wine since birth, truthfully. So I, that I, sounds more like an American dream. I, I didn't know that the French, especially in Burgundy, could just decide to start their own winery. Well, it's, it's very true. It was very iconoclast. At that time, nobody was really doing it, although it was in the 60s. So, you know, booming years after the war, yeah. things were really exploding and many people were very creative as far as doing businesses and rebuilding the country. And uh, very luckily, they were great, very inspirational. And over time, we had the pleasure, Jeff, to meet a lot of great families with incredible history. And, you know, some did not want to continue the vision of the great-grandparents or great-great-grandparents. So we had the pleasure to be able to build a great collection of fine wineries around us mm -hmm. and really acquire wonderful wineries like Bouchard, found in 1750, Moreau in 1814, Momessa in 1865, yeah. to one of the oldest vineyards of Burgundy, which is called Vougeot, Le Clos de Vougeot Blanc. We've had it together before from Domaine de la Vougeray, which yeah. was planted in 1110. So, you know, the family history is in many ways very recent because... Sure. They've only made wine for over 50 years. But at the same time, thanks to all those families joining our family, we have over 22 centuries of history. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. How, how successful, what a great uh, run well, they had. You know, success is a strong word. I would not call it a success. I would call it a journey. And for us, you know, it's like a chef. You know, you, you, you're successful till your next dish till your next mm -hmm. serving and you judge at every time you bring a plate to the table and i would say it's not that we we've had a success it's we've we've had a lot of fun bringing people together and following our dream
and following our passion. So, you know, what is success? Should success be monetary? I don't think so. Money doesn't bring much except being able to do things and bring people together to think of things differently. But I, I don't think success is anything but continuously dreaming to want to achieve. And I'm not suggesting it's just monetary. I mean, yes. certainly you're, uh, you've are you been successful soulfully and responsibly yes. and uh, emotionally. Emotionally very much. I think we, we're very passionate uh, to consistently undertake new ideas. And that's what I think the moment you don't have what the, the Spaniards call ganas, you know, guts or willingness to do something or envie, as we say in French, uh, it would be very sad. The, the moment you don't have any creative ideas or creative juice, that would be that would be hard. And you have a lot of it yourself. And by the, a lot of the questions you've asked me, you gave me three ideas of things I want to do. Oh, great. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Glad to hear it. Well, I expect to see my name on something. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, it's always a pleasure. Thank you for thank your time. Thank you so much. And thank you immensely for being interested in what we do. Since these enticing new wines are being released through various Boisse wineries, it's easier to find them at BoisseCollection.com. Look under Raymond Vineyards, Buena Vista Winery, and find the knockout under JCB by Jean Charles. You'll also see the many other properties he and his family own on the website. BoisseCollection.com. That's B O I S S E T collection.com. He's inspiring, delightful, and respectful. Jean-Charles Boisset. If you're looking to see what I'm up to, you can follow me on Twitter at JD Wine Road, on Instagram, also JD Wine Road, on Facebook at On The Wine Road, and find other interviews, events, and wine trivia on my website, onthewineroad.com. Thanks for listening to today's podcast.